welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and uh, today the, the idea is that I'm going to make me a mini paddock. Now, <coughs> excuse me, that uh, the mini paddock is going to be a little bit more mini than, uh, than some of the big boys, you know. I mean, all the big boy channels, I guess I need to comb my hair. <laughs> all the big boy channels have got a mini paddock, you know. Chuck Bromarito's got one, Tom Lipton's got one, uh, Randy Richard, Keith Rucker, I'm sure Adam uh, Booth's got one. So I gotta keep up with my heroes, you know? And uh, so I gotta make a mini paddock. And I've got the biggest piece of aluminum that I've got here. And now that my tapmatic's working, it'll be an easy, quick job, you know? So, we'll get on to that in a minute. I've, I've been watching a lot of channels and uh, apparently I heard a lot of people complaining about loss of revenue and, uh, you know, they're thinking of plans to move everywhere elsewhere. I mean, take Cody's lab. He's got over a million subscribers and just uh, yesterday, I think it was, he was complaining about his revenue had gone down because of all this advertising upset. And I got to thinking about that, and I thought, well, I get a tiny little bit of revenue from YouTube, but mine is so small that, you know, if it comes or goes, <laughs> it don't make any difference, really, you know? And uh, I can imagine some guy, you know, like Tom Lipton or Mr. Pete, start to lose 25%. That could hurt, because that's probably some real money, you know? But uh, I told him to pay me $100. I mean, to pay me when I had my money built up to a hundred dollars and I got I think four payments last year so you can see that it's not exactly rolling up the cash and it went down this year uh, after they started this uh, cleanup on on the bad channels I guess I'm maybe getting a little defunded because of having gun videos and I don't care I'm gonna keep on making gun videos and if I don't get paid nothing I'll keep on doing it because you guys show up to see them, you know? After all, I, I don't get enough money to have them, you know, to have a hook in me. It's not like my habit's bad, like a cocaine user, you know, it's down to snorting five pounds a day or something. All I get is just a few little grains, so I'm not addicted to it. All right, having gone through all that baloney, let's, uh, let's get back to making a, a mini pallet. All right, so the other day when I was uh, demonstrating the fact that my tapmatic works now, I drilled, I don't know what, five holes across there, and they were approximately a half inch apart, a half inch from the end. And I think that's probably closer together than what I really need. So I'm gonna lay this out and I'm gonna put holes an inch apart in every direction all the way up and down this uh, a uh, piece of metal here, okay? So my first my first little spot here is I'm going to move an inch back this way. All right, that was about 40,000. It's too much. All right. Okay, that's uh, one inch, give or take a couple of tenths. Right there. Come on. All right. One one inch and two ten thousandths. All right. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come along here. And I'm gonna drill all these holes. And of course, I guess basically I should really use a a uh, center drill to get them started so they'll actually be straight and in the same place. Thought I had everything all set up, but I don't. I'm going to try to stop the camera as little as possible and uh, all the rest of it will be at least speeding up or slowing down the video. And I put the, the little handles back on the, on the drizzly here so that I can do it like a drill press. I think that's faster and easier. Another inch. So I'm not 
tight enough. Could be dull also. I guess I need one of those uh, friction jobs. Uh, Self-tightening uh, thing, whatever. You know what, every half inch looks more reasonable. I'm going to go back and put one on the half inch. Alright, so all the holes are drilled. Next step is to uh, clean this mess up a little bit and get, you know, I have to raise the whole head back up because I was too high to reach for the drill bit. So then I'll have to re-zero everything. And then we'll go ahead and thread the holes with the Tapmatic. That's one of the disadvantages of a round column mill. You've got to line everything up every time you move it. And pretty near every time you do anything, you're going to have to move it. All right. Well, it's uh, it's sort of clean, and I'm breaking another rule here, but I don't have. There's just nothing I can do about it. I don't think. So I need I need to learn better ways to hold that little arm. But I've got a piece of plastic on it, so surely that's not going give so much resistance as to be a real big problem and uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, start threading these holes they're all a whole lot more uniform than that first five that I did because I did the first five by hand over there on the drill press laying it out and everything by hand so you know that wasn't too perfect now I've got this running a little bit faster because they said I could run a thousand rpm on a quarter twenty so I've got it running just a little under seven hundred Trying to be conservative, but it still is faster than, than it was when I tried it out the other day. So let's go with it. put you guys to sleep. Alright, you guys are seeing just a little blip in the video and here I am down to about the last four or five holes. But a lot of things have happened since I got to the bottom of the second row. The, uh, and I'll tell you about it in a minute. It's quiet. That's it. And uh, after I finished the uh, second row there, the, the boss lady came along and gave me an opportunity to do something else that she wanted done. And we went and did that for, for a, a day. And then I went and mowed a, a relative's yard. And they've got a couple little pit bulls. One of them's a, a, a female, and it's about a foot high, maybe a foot and a half. And the male's about nine inches tall, the top of his head. So I got out in the backyard mowing the yard, and the, and the, the female's barking at the lawnmower. And, and the little boy, he's standing there, and he's barking away. And he got so excited, he jumped up and bit me on the butt. So they had to go in the house. I, I don't think I could have handled a couple more bites, you know. So 
anyway, and also I discovered that uh, I didn't drill that hole or that hole. They're both right in line with each other. I guess I was in a forgetful manner when I got to that spot. So <laughs> I suppose I'll probably drill those holes and and, uh, and thread them. But on the back side, there's a tremendous, horrendous burr, a pile of burrs or, or whatever. So I'm going to have to roll it over and take a fly cutter and deburr the whole thing all at one whack. I wasn't intending on, you know, surfacing it or anything until such time as I put it in there and I put a project, you know, I had a project to cut on it. Then I figured I'd surface the whole thing and it'd be level. I put the, you know, screw down the project of whatever I wanted to hold and, and cut it. And, uh, but consider we've got this incredibly wonderful burr on the back here. I'm sure you can kind of see that, especially up close in the, up close camera. So I've got to get a fly cutter and clean that up. So you guys are going to go to sleep and when you come back this thing will be finished. I guess you could say that's the uh, lazy man's way of deburring. But it'll do the job. And there we are, uh, the old Rednecks mini pallet, and uh, this end's not squared off, it, this is the way I got it, and I'll square that off later when it gets to be a, an important point of the use. <coughs> this side isn't as beautiful, but once I get through washing it up, cleaning it, and I'm going to do a little tiny bit of deburn on this side, everything will be just incredibly lovely. So there you got it. That wraps up building a mini pallet and time to go see if Bubba or Thibodeau or Holy or who knows, somebody might be there. Maybe maybe Daisy came by. Now and then I like to get, you know, a little contact there with our Louisiana cousins. And uh, Boudreau, you know, he, he lives over in Louisiana and he's always a colorful fellow. And uh, He's got a grandpa. Grandpa his grandpa's name is Boudreau, but his grandpa's name is Boudreau Junior, which, you know, he and none doubt his father was had that name too. But anyway, Grandpa Boudreau there was a man of few words, you know, and so he was fixing his dinner or something there and an Avon lady come knocking on the door. And uh, she said, Is your wife home? Grandpa Boudreau says, Nope. She says, well, she says, uh, can I come in and wait for her? He says, okay. She said, sit down there in the kitchen. So she sat down in the kitchen, and he went on to doing whatever he was doing. After she had sat there a couple of hours, she was getting downright impatient. And she says, uh, Mr. Boudreaux, John, just where is your wife anyway? He says, down to the cemetery. She says, well, how long has she been there? He says, about 11 years. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.